down here at the Richmond waterfront. Um, we're gonna do a little painting in some of this, uh, in the areas where we kind of scoped out before and we've done some painting before. So we already kind of know a couple of the zones we wanna hit again. And, um, but this time we're gonna do something different. Nate's gonna be painting with gouache today and I'm gonna be painting with oil. And we're just gonna talk about some of the differences and also some of the advantages maybe of taking gouache out versus yeah. oil, what you can achieve with oil versus what you can achieve with gouache. Mm -hmm. And um, just kind of like the pros and cons of both yeah. in a sense. Yeah, you know? to highlight the advantages and disadvantages. There's yeah. not a lot of disadvantages, it's more like no, highlighting the advantages. Different. Yeah, it's just different. Mm -hmm. it's different. So we're gonna show my setup, my like how I go about building the gouache painting up outside. And um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. We can get to it. Yeah, cool. So we're talking about the differences today between oil and uh, gouache painting outside. So at least the differences that we've kind of found out as we've been doing this more. And I'd say one of the biggest ones is oil, oil painting supplies are just heavier in general. So um, can be more weight in your bag and which obviously makes a difference if you're walking on foot, which we typically do to all of our locations. If you're going on a trail to hike up a mountain to paint outside, I mean, it's really kind of follows, I think, the same rules as every ounce counts. Um, so we're constantly trying to slim down the types of supplies that we bring and kind of keeping everything as lightweight as possible, even from the boards that we bring out to the easel to the amount of paint. With gouache, it's a little bit different because you are, in general, you're painting, your paints are going to be smaller. The tubes are smaller. There's less weight there. Um, the palettes are going to be different. Nate's palette is plastic. Um, mine is metal and glass. So that on your back is going to be a lot heavier than having a small plastic palette. With gouache, you paint on paper, most likely. So that is going to be a lot less weight than bringing boards. Oil also requires just a few more things. So like you would need a thinner. So this is an added little weight. Um, Nate brings water. So that can be just a little plastic cup. You can get water wherever you end up, you know, versus having to bring it from home. So there's just a lot of things that can deter you from not wanting to go out and oil paint because of just the sheer amount of supplies that you have to bring and what you have to carry on your back. So it's a matter of trying to get your oil painting supplies down to the bare minimum or trying a different medium altogether like wash and getting out there and painting and doing it without having the intimidation of well I need thinner I need to bring this and I just don't have any room and I don't want to bring a big bag and it's a lot slimmer oil supplies so this is kind of my standard setup that I bring out um, I like to sit because I have more patience when I paint if I'm sitting so I bring a little portable stool which is really nice um, I have my easel, which is the Strata Large, or one of the larger versions of the Strata easel, attached to a tripod. I've been trying out some linen boards lately. Normally I paint on a hardboard panel, but uh, I find that for Alla Prima outdoor painting, it's nice to have like a little bit more tooth. So these linen boards have been really fun to experiment with. Got all my colors that I typically have out. This is kind of like bare bones. I have ivory black, French ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, cad red, transparent brown oxide or burnt sienna, uh, cad orange, Indian yellow, and then a bunch of other yellows, uh, cat yellow, yellow ochre, cad lemon, and then titanium white. I find that yellow kind of makes the biggest difference with all the different shades of yellow. So that's usually the kind of the biggest variety that I have on my palette because each one really does do something different, it seems. Um, and then from there, I have a little bottle of medium. This is a Gamblin solvent free medium that helps to just kind of loosen up your mixtures while you're painting. So you don't have to use just uh, solvent to kind of loosen up your paint. And uh, I have a can of uh, Gamsol, so thinner. And my brushes, of course synthetic flats and then bristle rounds. So anywhere from slightly larger to small. I don't have a lot of really small brushes because I still want to kind of keep all of my, my mark making kind of loose and big. So if I limit 
get my size of my brush to slightly larger, then I don't get too finicky. Um, palette knife, brush to kind of, this is just a really soft ink brush that helps to just kind of brush down some peaks in your oil paint to kind of help with glare. And then this is a texture brush. It's just a really cheap kind of bristle brush that I got from the art store. So this just all comes, bring it in a easy brush, brush pack right there. Then a little book for doing little sketches and thumbnails and things like that when I want to work out compositions. Gloves, because my patience runs out if I have too much paint on my hands for too long. So I wear gloves. Obviously you want to prepare for the weather. Today I was smart and I finally brought a hat, so that'll be good for the sun. Oh yeah, and a wet painting carrier. So you can bring out a couple of panels and then bring them back if you're traveling. And basically this just holds your panels so that they don't touch anything else in your bag when you transport them, which is really nice. So this is a 11 by 14, so we can go larger with it. That's really kind of where I leave it. Sometimes there's more colors, sometimes there's less. Sometimes I could experiment with different boards. Sometimes I experiment with different brushes, but that's kind of the basics, the bare bones of it. So here's my gouache setup. Um, one of the immediate differences is I don't have any painting medium because gouache is water soluble. So that means all you need is water, that's it. You try, I, in general, when I take my gouaches out, it's a lighter travel. I could bring a smaller bag, not in this particular case, I have my normal bag, but I can, I can put it in a smaller situation. So it's just more portable. It's easier to bring around. It's lighter in general. Everything is smaller, including the, the tubes of paint. I have my same easel that I use with oil painting uh, with a slight modification. I don't have my palette that I use with oil painting. I just have a watercolor palette and I'll put the link in the, um, in the comment section of like which one I use. Masterson Stay Wet Panel. It's a wet panel. So there's a, there's a, a sponge underneath this paper and you wet the sponge, you put the paper down, and then you put your colors on the paper. So it keeps your colors from drying out, which is one of the issues that you have with gouache is your, your paint will just dry, especially if the sun is out and the sun's hitting your, pan, your, your, your palette, your colors are gonna dry. So two ways to combat that, you have a palette that's wet and a squirt bottle, and you just squirt it every once in a while. Um, if it's windy, your, your, your paint's gonna dry. If, it's, if the sun is blasting down on it, your paint's gonna dry. So there's two ways to combat that. This is a work in progress. I have a rope that <laughs> keeps my palette from, from sliding off, which is not a solution. I'm gonna be totally honest, but it works well enough. I work on uh, paper, so it's, uh, it's watercolor paper. And I like to just tape it with artist tape to a board or to a panel. If I am good and disciplined, I'll do a little sketch of the um, composition before I start. Um, so I have a sketchbook, I have, you know, just like a pen, a couple uh, grayscale markers. I have a watercolor pencil, and this one is Prismacolor. It's a, I don't know, burnt sienna. I, I just lay in kind of like the outline kind of like just kind of rough rough stuff like if it's for instance if I'm doing some boats and some uh, buildings anything with architecture I will I'll make sure that I get the perspective lines and all that kind of stuff I'll put that in with this pencil I'm not gonna go and do detailed drawings I just put enough in that informs me where to put the colors here's a bag of colors right if I had the same amount of colors but they were oil, this bag would be like a shopping bag, right? Mm -hmm. But I tend to use more colors with gouache. I put more secondary colors like always have orange, I got purple, and I have green on there. Um, because I feel like if I need that pop of color, I will just grab that pure color and mix it in with whatever I've got and it'll get what I want. So in this case, I have French Ultramarine, I have this sky blue kind of sky blue i love sky blue or no sorry king's blue king's blue i've got emerald green i got a spectrum violet i have uh alizarin crimson cad red i've got my earth colors which are burnt sienna uh burnt umber and yellow ochre and then of course i've got my favorite lemon yellow and then i've got cad orange and that 
is kind of my standard. I have plenty more that I could put in there. I mean, I've got like a turquoise, I've got, again, colors that I never use in, in, with oil necessarily, because I could just mix them to the quality that I like. But with gouache, you kind of just want to get there. And these are sort of what I call get there colors. It'll just sort of nudge you in that direction. Um, the danger with having too many colors, obviously, is you lose your color harmonies. If you've just got all these colors and you're using them right out of the tube, the harmony is gonna kinda get lost. So you gotta be careful. So it's only adding a little bit here and there. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get started. So this is pretty much what I'm thinking of doing today. So basically if this was the border, this pencil is drawing the border, maybe actually a little bit higher. Something like this. But I like the darks, I like all this, this massive green. And then the boat, the structure of the boat, little highlights you can get, and then this really rich reflection here. Um, clearly, it's overcast, and it wasn't overcast about a half an hour ago, so sometimes that changes um, the direction of what your your comp what the, the, the direction your composition is going to take. Because if it's if it was really sunny, all of this was in sun, all of this, and so therefore this was much more interesting. You got little highlights back there, the trees were all um, hit by the sun, so it was really nice and warm, but the sun went away, so therefore I focus on this because there's just more contrast. I feel like it's just richer and more interesting. Were you doing this little boat over here? Yeah. yeah. This is what Lindsay's doing right here. So it's the same type of thing. It's rich warms back here, nice contrast going on between these trees and the boat and the reflections. The way I usually approach wash paintings is I'll, I'll, I'll start with a wash, like meaning that I, I water it down and I do just kind of a, a really loose sort of blocking of my, 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 the colors that I want shining through. So I'll usually do a burnt sienna wash. You know, I have some of that burnt sienna kind of shine through in certain spots. Sometimes I cover it all up. 
Oh, brushes. So let's talk about brushes for a second. So these are basically just watercolor brushes. Again, it helps with the transport ability because these brushes are pretty small. Uh, my my oil brushes are definitely bigger, so therefore it just takes up more room in the bag. These you can just put in a little brush holder that's like this big, and you can take them with you. So again, one more reason why gouache is way more portable in my opinion than, than oil painting. So a few things that I do to get some detail in at the very end, because um, this is kind of at that point now where I have a lot of big brush marks in there. Things are kind of blocked in. It's not real tight. There's some clean edges, but there's not um, real sharp points. Is coming in with a nice, clean, uh, synthetic. I like clean, short flats. So you get a nice kind of hard, uh, pressured edge versus kind of a softer long flat edge and you can come in and I what I do is I scoop I scoop the paint up onto the brush and then basically take it and kind of lay it in in a sense versus versus painting it and using my arm to kind of control the line it's more taking the clean edge of a brush and then basically pressing it in so that you get these kind of more sharper kind of little marks like that. And it's, I always like kind of brace my hand on the panel or on the easel and then come in with that hard edge. So another way too is um, with the palette knife. So I started with palette knife. I feel the most comfortable painting with a palette knife, but that also, each palette knife takes practice. They all do something different. You have to hold them all differently. Each tool is its own thing. Um, but my favorite is this kind of, uh, whatever this, this one is called. I have no idea. I don't know the names of any of my tools, but um, this one in particular is one I've been using since the beginning. And I like it because it doesn't have a step. You've got a nice long edge here. You've got a short edge there you can use. And I use this at the very end to also, again, kind of press in some of these lines. Say if I'm going to put something up there, you get real clean edges in there. And you can kind of start with a clean edge and then scrape down or scrape over so that you get these kind of areas that start clean and then end broken and messy. Um, so I do a lot of that. Now, but that I was, I always kind of save for the very end um, and get some of that clean detail in there. So another thing what's great about using these tools on the note of a palette knife is they're really good mark makers in the sense of making detail without actually painting detail. So if you kind of come into a zone, keep it somewhat general, but then just use your palette knife to kind of block in the shapes that you're seeing, it'll kind of make little marks that you're not totally intending, which kind of adds to let's say the, the busyness of an area or the small detail of an area. So for the case of this boat, there's a lot of just like stuff that's just like stacked up here, stacked over here, inside here. And if I were to come in with a brush and try and paint all those little things, to me, it would, I know I would organize it too well and it wouldn't be spontaneous enough. So with the palette knife, it kind of helps me prevent, it helps prevent me from doing that. So if I were to come in like I was doing before with some of these kind of red bits that are up here, like there's an inner tube and there's some other things, you know, I would just kind of try and block that in just with a palette knife and just see, just get the general color that's happening up there versus the actual real detail. And that to me gives it more of an impressionistic kind of feel, which helps you as the viewer fill in the details and let your own imagination kind of guide you through the painting without having everything 
perfectly explained. So that's kind of where I try and go with it. And also, when you're just kind of racing time outside, it makes it a lot quicker and a lot easier if you're just, you know, kind of trying to get the idea of it, the suggestion of it, versus the exact thing. I was on rugby tour once and we went, I was keeping short, there was like, um, we all went to the nightclub and there was a club 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 and there was a So just um, a note on the final stages of a plein air painting. I find that um, when I'm painting in oils, if I want to do tiny little marks and tiny little details, like let's say that this particular subject matter dictates some small marks, I have to plan that out like pretty much the beginning of the painting to, to keep the paint thin enough to be able to like put marks, tiny little detailing marks on towards the end. And I'm never that, I don't plan that far ahead. So by the end of the painting in oils, for me, it's always just like super thick and sloppy. With gouache, it doesn't matter how, how sloppy you get with that paint, it's gonna dry and you can just paint on top of it. So I was able to put these kind of small vertical marks, marks that I feel like made the painting finished versus almost finished. These I was just able to lay in on top, just little, little vertical marks, little tiny little dots and whatever. And that's gonna sit on there and it's completely dry. So, so you can do that. You can do that as much as you want, as much as your heart's content.